Good morning, guys. You're joining me today at the National Running Show at the NEC in Birmingham. It's uh, rather chilly today. We're looking forward to going in, seeing the stands, and uh, really looking forward to the presentations. So, hope you enjoy the video. Please do like and subscribe. Take care. I'd love you come on hydrating already, already preparing for the next race. I'm preparing for the jet lag from flying over from San Francisco last night. Yeah. Woo! All time. Yeah. That's not. It's not a medical thing either, is it? It's a. It could be a medical <laughs> thing. Yeah. A mental. Yeah. But I, I, I know last time I'm going to sit down because I'm wearing these shoes that I've never worn before. My heels are already <laughs> so, already hurt. Um, so um, last time we were here, you mentioned that coming to the run show was an incredibly intense experience. Partly the jet lag. Partly being exposed to so many people in such a short, um, short frame of mind. Like, how do you how do you view that experience now? Well, he hello everyone. I'm Dean Carnassus. It's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I just flew in yesterday. I love this show. I was here uh, four years ago. And when I first heard about the run show, I thought, who's going to show up to a running event if there's no event? <laughs> there's no race associated with it. And I was, I was very wrong. So it's nice to see everyone. Uh, what have I done in my life? I've done a lot of running. So I was um, a runner when I was a little boy. I stopped running when I was 15 years old uh, after high school. And then I was in a, a nightclub, a pub, on my 30th birthday, doing what we all do on our 30th birthday. I was in there drinking with me mics. And at midnight, I told them I was leaving, and they said, where are you going? You know, the night is young, let's have another round of tequila to celebrate your 30th birthday. And I said, no, I'm going to run 30 miles instead to celebrate. And they looked at me and they said, but you're not a runner, you're drunk. <laughs> I said, I am, but I'm still going to do it. Uh, but I made it. And I decided that that day I was going to become an ultra marathoner. So I quit my job and became an ultra marathoner. And uh, I don't want to date myself, but that was literally three decades ago. And I'm still somehow still doing it. So that's my story. Do you, do you think if you were say you were 30 today and you had the same journey to that point, do you think you'd had a very different experience in going into ultra running to, to then? Like, do you think you'd have gone in, you'd have gone out for that run in the same way? Or do you think society's changed so much it would have been a different sport, a different thing that attracted you? I don't know, I think uh, my response to technology is I kind of like to go running. I think that's why I do it. So I think now more than ever, uh, these kind of wild adventures just for the sake of an adventure is worthwhile. Uh, so much of our life is spent in a stream, uh, overwhelmed by the amount of noise coming at us every day that when I go running, it's, it's, I put it all away. It's a way to rejuvenate, to kind of find my soul again. So I think. More so than ever now, I think every 30 year old should go out and run 30 miles because it's, uh, it's just something that's elemental to being human and we're so far removed from it. And then, oh, I did uh, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll do, uh, you know, based on the day, interviews, podcasts. Uh, uh, I've got a couple books that are in the works. I've got a movie script I'm writing. So the, the good thing is it's all kind of on my schedule. Unless I have to get on a plane, I really don't even hard uh, you know, get timelines I gotta keep except for what I schedule. Are you, the, are you the same with like writing and doing things that are non-running in, in the same way? Do you bring the same mentality into that? Are you able to translate it or is there anything that you struggle with is what I'm asking? Well you know one thing I do is I do I guess you call it multitasking. I do a lot of writing while I'm running. So I have a digital recorder. Now I have an iPhone with an earbud. Because I think you'll agree, we have some of our clearest thoughts when we're out running. So I find that if I dictate while I'm running, um, then I can come home and just type up my notes. Or on a flight, I'll just, on my flight over here, I was typing up all my notes. And people say, "Wow, I was, you know, you, I felt like I was right with you um, in my, in when I read your books." And I think it's because I'm running as I'm telling the story. And every runner, you know, we're kindred spirits. We can all relate to each other. We can relate to our struggles. We can relate to our nipples bleeding, you know, shaping where the sun don't shine, all those sort of things. And it's very intimate, and that's why I think my books have kind of broken through with people. 
Well, you know, I've run this race called the Badwater Ultra Marathon, which some of you might know. It's 135 miles across Death Valley in the middle of summer, which is the hottest place on Earth. I've also run a marathon to the South Pole, which is the coldest place on Earth. Uh, I've run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Um, you know, I've raced and competed on all seven continents three times now. But my pinnacle race, and I'll never live this race down, is uh, doing a 10K, because I did a 10K with my daughter, Alexandria, on her 10th birthday. And to me, that was, nothing will ever surpass that. Yeah. And do you think, is she getting the running bug as well? Is she gonna follow in your footsteps? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I have two kids, Alexandria and my son is Nicholas, and they both love to run, but they're not competitive. I mean, they, uh, they just run for the sake of enjoying running. Uh, my son Nicholas ran a marathon. He said, uh, Dad, I want to run a marathon when I turn 14. This when he's 13. And I said, Nicholas, you don't just run a marathon. There's this thing called training. He's like, okay, I'm going to train. And the next day- down the pub and have loads of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> like his dad's. Is that his? <laughs> no, he, he really threw himself at it. And he finished a marathon. It was a very hilly marathon. Uh, and I said afterward, Nicholas, that was amazing. You finished a marathon. Let's go run the Chicago Marathon because Chicago Marathon is like the stage, it's flat. And he said, nah, Dad, I checked that marathon thing off my bucket list, done with that. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, what 14 year old has a bucket list? And second of all, you're a young kid, right? He was pretty much one and done, yeah. Who snored like a lumberjack. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. Um, most overrated race you've done? I think the Boston Marathon. I, I don't want to diss Boston because I love the Boston Marathon. I, and I, the, the race director is a good friend of mine, David Gilbury. We well, used to be. We used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've done Dean, this is Boston in London. <laughs> I think I think everyone should do Boston once, and you should do New York City once, you should do London once. But I think um, I think Boston's a, maybe a little. It's it's you know it's it's, it's Boston, so it's very celebrated, but it's. It's still, it's not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a road marathon. And the thing with Boston is, like when I walk around the show, I'll see people, we'll say hi, and how's it going, I haven't seen you in years. You see people you haven't seen for 15 years at Boston, they're like, what's your race goal? Like that's all anyone's saying, what's your, are you can try to back break three hours. So everyone just, all they're concerned about is their time at Boston, which has its place, but I think once for me, yeah. And do you, do you think that element of um, comparison is creeping into ultra now as well? Now that people are proving, people, there's far more people taking it more seriously. Or do you think there's still that space amongst ultra runners where you can just enjoy it without having to see who's the faster runner? I think ultra marathoning has changed recently a whole lot, especially in the states. Uh, there's this element of competitiveness, but it's still a very small percentage of the people that are out there actually trying to win the race that are racing. Maybe five percent at most. But now a lot of these races, there's such a great sense of camaraderie and community. And you know, these you'll come to an aid station in the middle of the night, they all have themes, you know, there might be Hawaiian dancers, there might be men in high heels, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so what would you say is your biggest mistake in a race? When you're traveling to a race, uh, never take a sleeping pill and a laxative before the race. <laughs> Well, I've advice, yeah. I don't think people needed that. I think, <laughs> don't jump off cliffs, you know, it's up there with that. Um, and what would you say is your lowest moment in a race, and lowest moment in a way that didn't turn into a positive, but was just low? It's going, really going for the sobbing here, so. <laughs> no, when I ran uh, 50 marathons in 50 stages in 50 days, I, I did a race in Alaska, so I had to take a plane. If anyone knows the US, there are two states that are not connected. One is Hawaii. So I, after finishing the marathon in California, I swam to Hawaii and did that. <laughs> and I got on a plane and flew to Hawaii, where it's very hot and humid. Then I flew to Alaska, where was, we were in a snowstorm. And then the next day after that, we flew to Arizona for uh, the marathon. I was, Arizona is a desert, so it's very hot and very brutally windy, sandstorm. And that, at the end of the, that marathon, I'll never forget, the next day I woke up and I couldn't even get out of bed. And I thought, I can't get out of bed today, how am I going to run a marathon? And that was marathon number 19. 
<laughs> so I thought, not only do you have to get out of bed, you gotta do this 31 more days in a row. And that was a pretty low point. I thought, there's, there's no way this, this thing is ending right here. And, and what got you through that? I think I stopped counting down. I was counting down the marathon. I think I stopped thinking about everything except the present moment of time. I just said, be in the here and now. Don't get ahead of yourself. Just get to the sink and splash some water on your face. So I got out of bed, I splashed some water on my face. I said, okay, there's your kit. You know, put on your shorts one leg at a time. Tie up your shoes, get to the start of the marathon. I got to the start of the marathon. The gun went off. I said, there's, there's not 26 miles you know, there's one step. <laughs> and I just said, put your next footstep in front of the last to the best of your ability. And I didn't think about anything except the here and now. And that's, that's not a place where we spend much time these days. I mean, we're very distracting. Even now when you're listening to me, our minds are so active, you're thinking about a thousand things. I stopped. I had the discipline to turn that off and say, all you're gonna think about is your next footstep and your next footstep. It's almost like a zen-like state, and if you can get yourself in that state, you can get through almost anything. Does being, does being watched and you know, being in the public eye, does that have any impact on that as well? Because I think you know, a lot of people who you know, set out to do a uh, you know, you know, huge multi-day ultras, run across the country, things like that, they normally don't get the media attention you know, that, that they normally get until right at the end of the race when it looks like they're going to complete it. And you get attention from the start when you say you're going to do something. Does that play any part at all in the, in the way that you think in terms of motivation or do you manage to shut all of that out? <laughs> Make you run faster. <laughs> Most of the reporters I can outrun, so you know, if I start getting tired, I just do pick up the pace a little bit. But Yeah, probably my funniest experience is um, one time I was running uh, across California and I had like, um, it, was, it was the equivalent of the Howard Stern show. So oh, yeah. It was a radio show in, in Los Angeles, it's very popular. And they were doing a live interview as I'm running. And this is when cell phones first came out. And I was trying, they were very serious. And I was trying to be very serious. And I got attacked by a dog. <laughs> so I'm running, just beating off this dog. And they're, and they're hearing in the background, like, rrr, rrr. they're like, are you okay? Are you all right? And I finally said, I'm being attacked by a dog right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video of the national running show at the NEC in Birmingham. And uh, please do comment below the video if you've been to the running show and uh, tell me what your highlights were. I think for me, the highlight was uh, Dean Karnaz's talk yesterday. Um, it was after reading his book that got me into running in the first place. And uh, Gary Robbins today. Um, that was very interesting and uh, James Dunn finally but uh, anyway guys I'll leave you here and uh, please do like and subscribe stay safe and take care bye bye